live from the Cake Studios, this is Cake News on your side at 10. A February afternoon and police get a report of a five-year-old child missing from his Wichita home. It would be the start of a long investigation as hundreds search parks, rivers, and farm fields. The stepmother, the last person to see Lucas alive, is questioned repeatedly. But it's a private investigator from North Carolina acting on a tip that leads police here. A dirt road in Harvey County. The search for little Lucas comes to a tragic end. As a community comes together outside the Hernandez home to pray for another murdered child. It is the news no one wanted to hear tonight. Wichita police and its forensic team are gathered on a dark dirt road in Harvey County. That's just 15 miles north of Wichita. It's where the boy's body was discovered earlier this evening. Cake News has live team coverage from Krista Miller and Jacqueline Chapel. But we start with Deb Ferris, who joins us live from the scene. Deb. Yeah, Jim, it is definitely dark out here. The only lights that you can see are those of the police cars behind me. They're still there at the scene where the body of Lucas Hernandez was found. Uh, we do have a police car trying to get through right now, so I'm going to move over just a little bit. Sorry about that. Lucas was found late this afternoon under a bridge behind me. And of course, um, lots of police have been out here all evening. There's only one house in this area. They said they haven't seen anything. It's a very wooded area with more on the investigation. Let's get right over to Cakes. Krista Miller for the latest. Yeah, this is just the beginning for investigators here in Harvey County. The sheriff tells us it'll be at least a day or two before they can say for certain who this body belongs to. It's so badly decomposed, but we do have confirmation tonight that the body is that of Lucas Hernandez. Law enforcement surrounded a stretch of road in southeast Harvey County for a sobering discovery. It is a, appears to be a small body. A small body under a bridge. You wouldn't see it if you were driving past. The view from above shows the scene. It's a rural area thick with brush and trees. Somebody, so somebody called our dispatch. I mean, and I don't know if it was, I don't know exactly how it went down other than Wichita police were involved. We know after talking to a private investigator who was contacted by Lucas Hernandez's family that it was he who made the discovery, finding the body of the five-year-old missing for more than three months. The beginning of the end for this sad story that has gripped the community. Oh, I Wichita police aren't making any statements tonight, but they will be out here for several more hours. Let's send things back to you, Deb. This search has been going on for months, looking for five-year-old Lucas Hernandez. It's at the center of this all was Emily Glass, the boy's stepmother. Now, the district attorney tells me she was out here earlier, but she has since uh, left the scene. We are told by Wichita police there have been no arrests made at this time. Now, of course, all the people who have been out searching along with the police department and other investigators have, have been several groups of people who have been looking for him on their own. Let's go live now to Jacqueline Chapel with reaction from them. Jacqueline? Deb, the Finding Lucas group says they've spent every minute of the last few months hoping and praying for this day to finally come. They say they got the call around 5 o'clock that Lucas Hernandez's body was found out here in Harvey County. They say that a private investigator, David Marshburn, is the one that found Lucas near a bridge off of Southeast 96 and South Woodlawn. He's only been in town for a few days and he's been working alongside family members and the search groups to help aid in the investigation. A lot of the searchers fought back tears as they talked about how Lucas is finally coming home. They say in recent weeks their searches have extended toward this area. Sheila Medlam of one of the is one of the main faces of, find, of the Finding Lucas group. She says their last search was about a two and a half minute drive from here. But because of how rural this area is, they wouldn't have made it to search this location until months from now. And the search group says they're not leaving this scene until Lucas does. We hope that we don't have to go out looking for another child. I mean, I think that's what needs to change. Um, I know I'm really sick and tired of watching all these kids fall through the cracks and these kids being abused. And they say that while these searches may be over for them, they're going to show up to every trial and every court date to make sure that justice is served for Lucas Hernandez. Live in Harvey County, Jacqueline Chapel, Cake News. 
So again, we are live out here in Harvey County where the body of a small person has been found, as the sheriff describes us, at this bridge here on a country road, dirt road. There's nothing around here, very rural area. And as we mentioned earlier, uh, you really couldn't see the body from the road and police tell us that it has been underneath that bridge for quite some time. It's very decomposed at this point. The coroner even telling me there's no way to identify that body at this time. But I did talk to Lucas Hernandez grandmother this evening and she told me yes this is the body of the little boy that they've been looking for for months. Jim we'll send it back to you. Thanks Deb. Well of course friends neighbors and some strangers many of them hoping for a different outcome. They've gathered outside the Hernandez home. It's located off of Edgemore in Wichita. Cakes Greg Miller joins us live from there and Greg earlier we saw a candlelight vigil. Is that still happening? It is still happening, Jim, and there's no signs of it slowing down. I want you to show behind me, tell you, show you the scene behind me. These are the people. Some of them have been gathering together every single day since Lucas first went missing nearly three months ago. Tonight they are gathering again to pay tribute to him and to remember him. They came together one more time, this time to mourn the news they had feared for so long. They stood in front of the home, gathering together, holding candles and trying to honor the little boy. Some of them didn't know him at all. Others may have seen him in passing. Others were quite close, but they say now they are praying that the little boy has found the peace he deserves. Say that we need to all come together as a community without no drama and give this boy the best going home party there could be. Now also here in Wichita earlier tonight, we were outside of police headquarters downtown. We saw DA Mark Bennett walking into the police department. I did ask him for any kind of comment, but he simply said it was just too soon. He walked inside with what we believe are two other investigators. I want to show you the scene out here one more time. There is no sign of this dying down. We saw a couple of people walking up a few minutes ago. Uh, they had uh, balloons. They had more candles. They had motorcycle passing by there. Apologize for the for the noise and that, but yeah, they're they're going to be out here for a little while, while longer. Um, you know, j just remembering the little boy. Obviously, the news nobody wanted to hear, as we said off the top of the broadcast. Reporting live in Wichita, Greg Miller, Kick News. All right. Well, it is hard to believe, but it has been a total of 95 days since this all started. Of course, Lucas Hernandez was first reported missing from his South Edgemore home. We just showed you that was back on February 17th. Then on February 21st, Lucas's stepmother, Emily Glass, was arrested for child endangerment. That was for another child, her, her child. Uh, Lucas's grandmother asked later for a private investigator. That was David Marshburn. He's the one from North Carolina who helped to find the boy today. And finally, Glass was found not guilty in that case involving child endangerment, involving her one-year-old daughter. District Attorney Mark Bennett claimed at the time that Glass remained a person of interest in this missing case. From the outside looking in, you think these two had been lifelong friends. But in reality, before Lucas went missing, Sheila Medlam and Julie LaForce didn't even know each other. I think we all had our own personal reasons to begin with. And then it was just Lucas. <laughs> Lucas kept us going. The two have become the main faces of the Finding Lucas Hernandez group. And over time, developed connections to Lucas, even though they'd never met him. We fell in love with him. We got to see a thousand pictures of him. We got to visit with his family and get to know like his quirky little personality. And once they got the call that he was found, a sigh of relief. Today is basically we're trying to process everything. I mean, we've had to put a lot of our emotions and on hold for three months. They say in recent weeks they'd searched areas just minutes away from where Lucas was found. But because of the thick brush and trees, the crews wouldn't have made it to this spot for months. We were right there. We just hadn't gotten that far yet. It was um, just a tremendous relief because we never wanted to fail Lucas or let him down. That was um, never on our agenda. It was always to bring him home. Before Lucas's body was taken away from the scene in the coroner's van, the search crew got to say goodbye to the boy they had come to know, giving his mom their full love and support. I would love to thank Harvey County for allowing us that moment. I mean, not only the family, I mean, to be able to, to stand protective over him until he was brought out and then to be able to say a prayer. Say goodbye. And to say goodbye.
The area where Lucas Hernandez was found is barren. There is only one home near the site, otherwise it's an open space. But it didn't take long for David Marshburn to find him, saying the boy's stepmother, Emily Glass, was key. She was with me at the time we found Lucas. Uh, I needed her to find Lucas because I knew she was the key and she was uh, responsible for him missing. And he wouldn't confirm reports that Glass already knew Lucas was dead. Is it true? I can't, I can't, I don't want to jeopardize the case. Marshburn calls it a gift, the ability to detect subtle clues to find missing people, body language being a key component. That ability proved vital in the search for Lucas. Her body does the opposite of what we are saying if it's a lie. And if it's the truth, our body coincides with what we're doing, what we're stating. And that his meeting with Glass and Lucas's father, Jonathan Hernandez, was key. My person of interest was Jonathan and Emily, but, and I told him that. He said, "My, I, I'm an open book to you. Back in North Carolina now, he admits this one took a toll. Grateful to help solve a months old mystery, even if it was the saddest outcome possible. Emily Glass is out of jail after the Sedgwick County District Attorney announced charges won't be filed in the Lucas Hernandez case at this time. How do you feel about being released today? Glass didn't answer any questions and hid her face from the cameras. A small group of people showed up for her release. They aren't happy. Glass is free. But this woman just walked out and she had to have killed this little boy. I mean, come I mean, on now. Babies are blessings to everybody that can have them. So, it's, I mean, people need to take advantage of them. It's been almost a week since police say Glass led a private investigator to Lucas's remains in Harvey County. District Attorney Mark Bennett says police are working on new leads and waiting on the toxicology report before filing charges. And by law, prosecutors have 72 hours to charge someone with a crime before the inmate must be released from jail. When I first read about him and his circumstances surrounding his disappearance, I found it highly, highly unusual. When five-year-old Lucas Hernandez was reported missing from his Wichita home in February, it made national headlines. The five-year-old was last seen Saturday afternoon. And the intensive search tonight for a little boy back here at home. So there's the stepmom who discovered him missing. And it garnered the attention of Nancy Grace. What happened to Lucas Hernandez? For the second day, Grace's podcast, Crime Stories with Nancy Grace, has revealed parts of a conversation recorded by private investigator David Marshburn as Emily Glass led him to Lucas's body. I'm a piece of shit. Do it now. I'm a piece of shit. I did Lucas so wrong. I did him wrong. God, honest truth. I can't do Joe. I can't. The recording raises questions about the circumstances surrounding Lucas's death, but Grace is clear about one thing. Glass hasn't been charged in the case. And right now, Emily Glass has been released from prison, so she's considered to be innocent at this juncture. The usually outspoken and opinionated talk show host was reserved and passionate about this case and how it affects her. Our number one concern is not getting scooped or uh, that's not what this is about. I want in no way to compromise the police investigation. Glass was released from the Central County Jail Wednesday after the district attorney announced he would not be filing charges against her at this time. And this is the end of the story? I don't think so. This is not the end of this story. Police lined the street in front of the Hernandez home again early Friday morning, this time investigating the death of Emily Glass. They kind of took a bunch of questions away like we aren't going to be able to get any really answers that we wanted to get and in my opinion I think she took an easy way out. Police say it was Jonathan Hernandez who found the body of his girlfriend inside the home, a rifle beside her and three suicide notes. He called 911. And given the um, obvious impact this case has had on the community, it was important to at least weigh in a little bit. District Attorney Mark Bennett admitted he didn't have much to say hours after the death of Glass, but he addressed the question on everyone's mind. What does that do to the overall investigation? The answer is to be determined. 
Bennett reaffirmed that Glass was the only person of interest in the death of her boyfriend's five-year-old son, Lucas Hernandez. But even after her release from jail last week, he says it didn't mean an end to the investigation. We didn't have an autopsy back on Lucas at the time. And without a cause of death, without more definitive information, it was going to we were not going to be in a position to charge Ms. Glass at that time with crime. That did not mean, it never meant, that there was, the case was over with and we'd given up. It just meant that we needed more time. Lucas went missing in February. Glass then led a private investigator to the boy's body in late May. Bennett said he hasn't read the suicide notes police say Glass left, but he knows the gist of them and says they don't settle the issue. But he knows this case has the attention of an entire community and wants to get answers to them. I'm not going to just let it lie and close the book on it and let people wonder what, whatever happened because obviously there's, there's concern.